This math problem is about counting the number of cattle in a herd. It took 2,200 years to solve, and the number of cattle in the final answer is so big that if you take all of the atoms in the known universe and turn each of them into their own universes, then there would be more cows than all of the atoms in all of these universes combined. So what was this problem, and why did it take so long to solve? The problem was sent to Eratosthenes as a poem about the number of cattle owned by the sun god Helios. Eratosthenes was the chief librarian at the Library of Alexandria and the second best mathematician of his day. The problem has four parts that get more and more complicated, and the overall setup is more important than the specific numbers. It starts like this. If thou art diligent and wise, O stranger, compute the number of cattle of the sun, who once upon a time grazed on the fields of the Thrinacian Isle of Sicily, divided into four herds of different colors, one milk white, another a glossy black, a third yellow, and the last dappled. In each herd were bulls, mighty in number, according to these proportions. Understand, stranger, that the white bulls were equal to a half and a third of the black, together with the whole of the yellow while the black were equal to the fourth part of the dappled and a fifth, together with, once more, the whole of the yellow. Observe further that the remaining bulls, the dappled, were equal to a sixth part of the white and a seventh, together with all of the yellow. So far, this isn't so bad. Using a calculator and the modern tools of linear algebra, we can solve this in seconds. But even the ancient Greeks would have had ways to do this. There was an elaborate geometric method that was probably in use at the time, and a couple centuries later, the mathematician Diophantus recorded a method that looks a lot like a precursor to algebra. It only had a symbol for one unknown value, but we could start by assigning the unknown to the white bulls and assuming an arbitrary number for another. Like, let's pretend there's just one yellow bull. Then we can use a series of substitutions to figure out the relative sizes of the other groups. In the end, you get these numbers. But of course, you can't have a fraction of a bull. So we need to multiply everything by a least common denominator to get this. We haven't counted the female cows yet, but at the moment, we're looking at about 6,300 bulls. The poem continues. These were the proportions of the cows. The white were precisely equal to the third part and a fourth of the whole herd of the black, while the black were equal to the fourth part once more of the dappled and with it a fifth part when all, including the bulls, went to pasture together. Now, the dappled in four parts were equal in number to a fifth part and a sixth of the yellow herd. Finally, the yellow were in number equal to a sixth part and a seventh of the white herd. Okay, this is kind of more the same for counting the female cows. Once more, we can assign the unknown to one type of cow and substitute our way through to a solution. Then we multiply up the size of the entire herd to get rid of our fractions. So the total comes out to 50,389,082 cattle. If thou canst accurately tell, O stranger, the number of cattle of the sun, giving separately the number of well-fed bulls, and again, the number of females according to each color, thou wouldst not be called unskilled or ignorant of numbers, but not yet shalt thou be numbered amongst the wise. Let's talk about who wrote this and why they thought they could challenge the great Eratosthenes. The poem was rediscovered in a German library in 1773. The inscription credits Archimedes, the greatest mathematician of his time and one of the greatest who ever lived. Archimedes often wrote to Eratosthenes because not only was Eratosthenes one of the only people who could understand Archimedes' math, but Archimedes would have wanted the Library of Alexandria to preserve his work for future generations. Most historians agree that this problem probably really does come from Archimedes, though some have suggested that the first part that we've read so far could have actually been written by Eratosthenes himself, and then this next part would have been Archimedes' reply. But come, understand also all these conditions regarding the cattle of the sun. When the white bulls mingled their number with the black, they stood firm, equal in depth and breadth, and the plains of Thrinacia, stretching far in all ways, were filled with their multitude. It's saying that the number of white bulls and black bulls added together has to be a perfect square. One way that we can think about big numbers that are perfect squares is to look at their factors. 
In order for a number to be a perfect square, all of its prime factors have to be squared as well. So if we take our herd of 7 million black bulls and 10 million white bulls, and we want to figure out what we need to multiply it by so that it's a perfect square, we can look at all the factors, like so, and see what's missing. We can figure out this part of the problem if we just multiply the current size of our herd by the product of these numbers. So that's going to bring the total up to 224 trillion, 571 billion, 490 million, 814,418 cattle. And we're not even done. Again, when the yellow and the dappled bulls were gathered into one herd, they stood in such a manner that their number, beginning from one, grew slowly greater till it completed a triangular figure, there being no bulls of other colors in their midst, nor none of them lacking. If thou art able, O stranger, to find out all these things and gather them together in your mind, giving all the relations, thou shalt depart crowned with glory and knowing that thou hast been adjudged perfect in this species of wisdom. The yellow bulls and the dappled bulls have to form a triangular number. Here's where it goes from complicated to potentially unsolvable. You'll have a triangular number of bulls if you can set them up where the first row has one bull, the next row has two, then three, then four, and so on. One way to calculate triangular numbers is to recognize that I can pair off my rows. When I rearrange things this way, I get a rectangle where the length is equal to the original number of rows plus one, and the width is equal to half the number of rows. Multiplying length by width gives me the total number of cows, and we can simplify that a bit to get this. The key to making our number of yellow and dappled bulls into a triangular number is going to be to find a value that fits everything we did before and gives us a whole number solution to this equation. Since this is a quadratic equation, we can solve it using the quadratic formula. We know that we'll get a whole number answer whenever this part under the square root sign, what's known as the discriminant, is a perfect square. So now, our job is to find a multiple that lets us scale up the number of dappled and yellow bulls so that this equation works. Since we don't want to mess up our perfect square from the last part, this new multiple also needs to be a perfect square. This gives us an example of what's known in number theory as a Pell equation. By the time the cattle problem was written, Greek and Indian mathematicians had been studying this type of equation for a couple hundred years already, and they'd used it to do things like approximate the square root of two. Since the equation x squared minus 2y squared equals 1 can be rearranged like this, any whole number solutions for x and y give us a fraction that's really close to the square root of 2 when we estimate by ignoring that 1 in the numerator. The bigger the pair of numbers we find, the better the approximation. Meanwhile, Archimedes himself found an impressively accurate estimate for the square root of 3. While nobody knows for sure how he found it, it seems likely that he used a similar strategy. It goes without saying that the Pell equation for this cattle problem is significantly more complicated. While some think that Archimedes could have understood the setup and maybe recognized that this cattle problem did have an actual whole number solution, it would have been impossible for him to have found the full value. In fact, it would be thousands of years before mathematicians would be able to solve this problem. In the 7th century AD, the Indian mathematician Brahmagupta had found a method for solving certain Pell equations, and a few centuries later, Bhaskara was able to show that this type of equation always has a whole number solution. But even by the time the cattle problem had finally been rediscovered in 18th century Germany, nobody could find an answer for many years. Early in the 19th century, there was a rumor that C.F. Gauss had a method for solving this problem, since it was one of the most famous unsolved math problems of the time, and Gauss was the greatest mathematician of the era. But he never published anything about it, and others think he wouldn't have been that interested in a problem that didn't have a wider application. So it took until 1880 for Carl Ernst August Amthor to work out that the solution starts with the number 776 and is 206,545 digits long. For comparison, the number of atoms in the known universe is a number that's about 80 digits long. 
If each one of those atoms turned into their own universe, then the total across all of these universes would be a number that's around 160 digits long. About 10 years after Amthor's calculation, a few members of the Hillsborough Mathematical Club of Hillsborough, Illinois, spent four years to find the first 31 digits and the last 12 digits. Finally, in 1965, the complete answer was computed in seven hours and 49 minutes on a supercomputer at the University of Waterloo in Canada. Even now that the complete solution's been found, mathematicians have still worked on this problem in the hopes of finding simpler algorithms that computers could use to speed up these kinds of computations. So why would Archimedes have sent this problem to Eratosthenes anyway? Was it some kind of prank? If it was, it wouldn't have been out of character for Archimedes. Based on his writings, it does seem like he enjoyed needling his fellow mathematicians who weren't quite at his level. He was known to send out deliberately incorrect discoveries to see if anybody would take the bait and try to prove that something wrong was right. But this cattle problem was more than just a prank. It gives us a sense of Archimedes' love for huge numbers, something that he also wrote about in The Sand Reckoner, where he tried to calculate the number of grains of sand in the universe. In the process, he invented a system for describing very large numbers and discovered the basic laws of exponents. There's another theory that says that this problem was actually the final blow in a mathematical duel between Archimedes and the much younger Apollonius of Perga, who had published several works attempting to one-up Archimedes' accomplishments. But if it is true that Archimedes had a sense of how to construct a solution to this cattle problem, even without knowing the final answer, then it would be yet another sign that a significant amount of the math that Archimedes worked out during his life has been completely lost to history.